Can people hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 I am Punjan and we are going to discuss functional equations. Is there anyone who did not attend yesterday's class? If yes, I'll just give a quick recap. Or we can just start with it. So, did people try this problem today or yesterday? Oh, uh, yes, I tried, uh, but I didn't understand the part that how f of one equals one. Oh, we did that yesterday. Okay, so I'll... Um, I'll okay, go. I think I have a solution for this. Mm -hmm. A slightly different approach, which ends up with f of one only at the end. So what I did was essentially f of one is k. Um, let a be... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let a be one. Substitute a as one in this in the initial one. So yeah, um, f of b plus f of a minus one. Basically, the third term has to be between f of b minus one and f of b plus one. So it has to be equal to f of one. The third term, f of b plus f of a, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's f of a minus one is between f of b minus one and f of b plus one. True. So it has to be f of b. Yeah, this is f. But this would imply that basically the function is periodic, and if we mm -hmm. take a, and if we take like a plus n n k n into k minus one n into k minus one essentially essentially we can show that as as we keep increasing um, n we'll eventually get to a point where a plus n k minus one is great much greater than um, the difference between the i mean this either much lesser than or much greater than the, what we should have Greater than f of b plus f of b plus f of a minus one because the second two this terms are f of a, this a and then f of b plus f of a no um okay, I think a plus a, n we'll eventually great get that a plus n k minus one is greater than f of b plus f of b plus f of a minus one yes and either way is like just try to bound a since we can fix a it could be anything then it will be nice because we have finitely many values of f and we can take infinite values of a fair. Yeah, so eventually you will get a point where you can't Yes, answer, right? take a really, really large value. Uh, so okay. we can like take a much very, very greater value of n such that the inequality doesn't hold. Yeah, yes. the inequality where the second term and the third term have to be greater than a will not hold if you take n is very high. Exactly, so that just gives f of one equals Yeah, and from that we get f of b plus f of one minus one is f of one minus one is equal to f of b. So f of b is, um, I mean, from that we can get f of f of b is f. Of you can't get that directly, I suppose. Uh, can I can I complete it? Yeah. Okay, so let's take b is equal to one and a is equal to so many. Any random integer, positive integer. Let's A, keep it. it. Yes, yes, just keep it. So we just try to bound it. So we get f of f of a. Yes, we'll get f of f of a. 
here. Uh, we get f of f of a lies between a plus one and a minus one. This is possible if and only if f of f of a is a itself. Okay. Can I make another claim? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my claim is that f is increasing. By this one, we get that f is an surjective function and injective function, i.e., f is an bijective function. Yeah. Okay. So I make a claim that f is decrease. Uh, f is an increasing function. Yes. Yeah. So we have that uh, to prove f is increasing. I will just like put f of two is equal to some random integer k. Yes. So my claim is subclaim. Count it as subclaim. F of n is equal to n minus one times f of two minus f of oh it's not f of it will be n minus two yes n minus two now we will just prove this by induction for n is equal to one it works you can see it works for n is equal to one now we fix any n is equal to k works now we'll How try to prove n oh this is induction now we are induction no, like it will become faster. Oh, no, it doesn't. So let's prove it for f of three, f of two itself. So you put f of two is equal to one times f of two. Yeah, that that is true. Yes, that is true. Uh, now we uh, we will induct now. So we know that n is equal to k works. Now we work for n is equal to k plus 1. Yes. Now just put a is equal to 2, b is equal to m plus 1. k plus 1. Yes. We will get 2 f of m plus 1. And we have this, we have this, and we have this. Yes, yes. F of k plus one, f of k plus one so minus one, that is just f of k plus f of two. K. Yes. You can just cancel the one in k plus one. Okay, sure. So we have like two. Now we have that f of k plus f of two. Is either f of k plus one plus one f of k plus one or f of k plus one minus one. Now we need to prove that f of k plus one plus one and f of k plus one minus one doesn't work. Like if f of k plus one plus one works, then we just substitute in this equation that f of k plus f of two is equal to f of k plus one plus one okay so we get that k plus f of two is equal to f of k plus one plus one i i'm sorry but get... i didn't see by oh then we will just use another inequality here wait let me see here
Can you give me five minutes? Just to... <laughs> sure. Can I say an idea? Um, so like we have that f of b plus f of a minus one just from the initial thing is less than f of b plus a. Or wait, wait, no, no, it doesn't work. No. Yeah. Uh, can I try an idea? Uh, so take uh, b equal to f of two. Uh, so we have a two a, a a plus two is greater than f of f of a minus one, which is greater than a minus two. That means f of Uh, now we will take the case. Uh, let f of uh, f of two plus f of a minus one equal to a. Now we will take uh, again f on both sides. Uh, so this would imply f of two equal to one, uh, but f is a bijection and f of one equal to one. So this will be a contradiction. Yes, so that means, yeah. So f of f of uh, f of two plus f of a minus one equal to a minus one or a plus one. Now, again, if you are taking uh, f on both sides, we will get that f of a plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of a plus 1 or f of a minus 1. f of a plus f of 2. Minus. Now, uh, we will induct. So, first for the base case 2, observe that. If you are taking a equal to 2, a equals to base case, a equals to a equal to 2. So now, now if we are, uh, if for the base case, if so, our claim is that f of a plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of a plus 1. That's our yes. claim. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so for the base case, assume that f of uh, 2 plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of 2 minus 1. Uh, this So f of 2 equals 2? 1. No, f of 2 would be 1, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, we just clearly contradiction. So this is not possible. So for base case, it's 2. Uh, now uh, we can just uh, assume that uh, it's go for some k. So then for k plus one, so for uh, f of So uh, for k plus one, we'll have f of k plus one plus f of two minus one minus one must be equal to f of k plus two or f of k. F of k. Now, if f of k plus 1 plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of k. f of k plus 1 minus f of k. Is that what you said? No, f of k plus 1 plus f of 2 minus 1.
equal to f of k. Then uh, by inductive hypothesis, we had that f of k plus one equal to f of k plus f of two minus one. So substituting that, we will get. No substitute. Substituting uh, a equal to k, we will have f of k plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of k plus 1. Substituting that yeah. for f of so, k plus 1. This one sometimes we Again, contradiction. Uh, so f of k plus 1 plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of k plus 2. So this was our claim that f of a plus f of 2 minus 1 equal to f of a plus 1. Now we can take Okay, just this, uh, this also proves the okay. claim on that it is an increasing function since f of 2 is greater than 1. And just note that f of a plus 1 minus f of a is equal to f of 2 minus 1. Yeah, I think increasing terms will be like Wait, wait, wait. like okay. just uh, no, no, a, I like, like, uh, like he made like if you are proceeding by uh, my claim, we had that uh, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, and so on, uh, it will be an AP, right? AP, oh, yeah, yeah. AP. We can just substitute now because like, this they is just the common that difference. Common that difference. Is, they just prove that it is a linear function. Exactly. Yes. and then we can substitute things easily. but like uh, here we have that claim f of a plus f of 2 minus 1 is equal to f of a plus 1 right yeah the claim he made just uh, so yeah. we just take f of a to the other side to get f of 2 minus 1 is equal to f of a plus 1 minus f of a yes now just note that since f of 2 minus 1 is greater than 0, since f of 2 is greater than 0, or uh, greater than 1, sorry. Yes. So now we have that f is an increasing function and exactly. it is in bijection too. So since it is in bijection and an increasing function, like for some moment say it is not equal, f of x is not equal to x, then it has to be either greater than x then if it is greater than x, now we just move on to another variable and we can just uh, take the gap left, the number between the gap left and since this is an injective, we should have a function and then it will just fail. Yeah. So f of exactly. x is equal to x. So that's the base case of the part that f of 1 is I guess I made the wrong claim of proving the recursion. I, I think you added an extra F here. Yes, I could have done it with you. Yeah, like, okay, one less F. Substitute A plus 2 is much worse than substituting A. No, B plus F2. Now you can just verify like A and B. A plus B minus one clearly works. Is that clear? Yes. Questions?
Can people try this problem? Oh, yes, I tried, but I think I didn't make much progress. Just... Made a bit progress. Yeah, but then just... oh, okay. So, like, we have f of x is greater than or equal to ax for all x. Yes. And now we have that f of x is greater than equal to why are we typing? Second actually. Oh, is oh okay, the okay, okay. pad working? Okay. This control Z this. Now we have f of x is greater than or equal to ax for all x for all positive real x. Okay. Now we can also have that f of x is also upper bounded by a plus one x for some x. Is not really an integer, so I mean, even if it was, like I, I'm not assuming that A is an integer. I'm just asking you to just substitute that. Yeah. I don't see why this yes. is. Just because, like, we have f of x is greater than or equal to a x for all x. Now, if it was greater than or equal to a plus one into x. For all x, then this a would have not been that maximal number. A plus one would have been. So it is bound upper bounded by x into a plus one for some x. Okay, how about looking at x times a plus half? Then it should okay. be less than x. You can plus just a plus like half, right? put a plus k where k is smaller than one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, k can be any integer by that. K is yeah. smaller than one, according to my. Not That's just integer, any real. Okay, any real. X into uh, a plus k. For yeah, integer. okay. I, I think you got the problem. So basically, it's like let's say five functions are both. F of x equals x, x squared, 3x, 5x, and x cubed. For this, like just looking at this function, a equals 1. Just looking at this. A equals x, okay, like A equals 1, because f of x is f of 1 equals... You know, like A is equal one. to 1 doesn't work in x squared, right? Just like... Yeah, just oh. ignore this equation right now. Yes, yes. I was yeah, just this A equals 3, A equals 5. Okay, just ignore these two options right now. So, because of this, like, what will be the capital A here? Capital A will be 1. The claim is capital A is really 1. Ignore the problem. Let's say, like, yes, FX equals something. Don't hide the inequality. <laughs> okay. Do you see why this does not hold? I'm like saying for some x it is not for all x. It works for at least one x. What if like um okay, let's say here. Okay. 
a capital A equals one. Yes. So f of x, which is three x, is greater or equal to x and less than or equal to two x because of this. But this is clearly not. Okay, what does x I am like f of x is greater than or equal to a x for all x? We need to for the largest a that is possible. Okay, so like if it a was the largest a, and if x is not bounded by a plus one times x for some x, then a plus one should be the largest a, but it isn't. So a contradiction. Okay, okay. Um, how about this? Okay. There's, so, like, we um, oh, yes. three functions that work. Ignore if the actually work one. f okay. of x equals x, f of x equals 2x, f of x equals 3x, and f of x equals x right then. What will be the capital A here? Capital A should be three here uh, if all of them work. No, it will be oh, one, one by one. So oh, we have to find the largest A, right? Oh, so like F should belong to this set, which is the set of all functions that work. So we need to yes. check for all the functions that work. And we need and to pick the largest A, right? No, like you don't need to pick the largest thing. For f of x equals x by 10. Yeah, you need to pick the sum a that's such that it f of all the functions oh, that it, work. Like it works for all functions, right? Exactly. So in other words, you need to find the minimum. Technically, uh, so not really. Because like, what if it's this. x squared? What if it's I x squared? Yes, I just fake solve this problem. Yeah, that's uh, actually. Yeah, actually, ahead. I have a solution. Uh, I mean, that proves that a is equal to one by two, but I'm not sure if it's correct. Actually, first we can assume that uh, uh, let's for some a it uh, it is the largest, and then we will have that f x is greater than or equal to a x. For that a and a is the largest yeah sure and then uh, we will get that f of uh, f of 2x uh, f of f of 2x uh, basically uh, one more f and then uh, is greater than or equal to uh, a times uh, f of 2x and then this is greater than or equal to uh, 2a square uh, x and then we can add one more x i mean because where it is yeah, that works. Uh, uh, then we can add uh, x and then we will get that uh, f of 3x is greater than or equal to 2a square uh, plus 1 uh, x. Yeah. And then uh, we can we can just, uh, uh, what we can do is, um, basically we have that, we can say that uh, we are getting another constant that is uh, 2a square plus 1 by 3. Basically, f of x is greater than or equal to 2a square plus 1 by 3. And then this has to be less than a, uh, because uh, uh, because we assume that a is the largest. Exactly. So uh, uh, so so uh, so we'll get that a three a basically is greater than or equal to two a square plus one. And then this gives that a, a is between one by two and one, and a is equal to one by two works. So a is Wait, equal to one. By two. Are you trying to say three or three a? Oh, wait, what? how is that? It got it, got it. Okay. And a is equal to uh, oh, sorry f f f x is equal to x by two works so uh, uh, a is equal to one work. Yeah, that works. Just verify the function here since like three x by two. But in some way, you just try to like uh, compare the lower one um, yeah, of the function. Actually, the two inequalities um, at the bottom like they won't be. You can't conclude yes. that f of x greater than or equal to two a square plus one by three. Like, like it works, but it doesn't. Right? Uh, okay, I think I have a more rigorous proof. Um, yeah, why so does this not work? Okay, okay so like we have got the lower f bound. Of 3x, the... f of three x just is greater than three. Can let me complete it. 
Okay. Eight two a square plus one could still be greater than three x, but less than greater than three x, but less than f of three x. It's basically saying okay, f okay. of three x is greater than one constant and greater than another constant. They don't need to be here. All right, we're not it, doing some I inequality I have here. A more, uh, yeah, I have a more rigorous proof. I think. Yeah, just a second. second. So what first, what wrong? Yeah, the first, uh, the first step I did was prove that there can't be any constant. So basically, um, limit f tends to zero will be uh, zero. Um, that's pretty obvious to see if you take f of x is like g of x where g of x has no constant plus some k um it will basically be uh, f of um f of 3x plus g of 3x plus k has to be greater than or equal to some other um g g of something else plus some um, yeah, there'll eventually be a 2k plus on this side. And as you take x tends to 0, g of x will tend to 0, right? So there can't be, a, um, k can't be positive because otherwise 0 greater than Why k Why does will g of x tend to 0? Um, we, we already take f of x is uh, g of x plus k where g of x has no constant. g of x will tend Sorry, to 0. Could you elaborate on what you mean has no constant? Has no constant basically means like um, once you take the basically it's like see, f does not have to be a polynomial, so you can't just separate the constant term. It could um, just yeah, be but like you can still take g of x is equal to f of x minus limit x tends zero f of x. Sure. Of as, um, g of x as g of x as x tends zero will still be zero. It doesn't need to be a polynomial. I get that, but you can still take g of x as f of x minus limit x tends to zero f of x, which yeah. has, essentially still gives you a limit x tends zero g of x is zero. Um, like, are you getting my point? It's not, not really. that f of x is, it's not that f of x is a polynomial. Just take, let limit x tend to 0 f of x be k. Define g of x as f of x minus limit minus k. for all x. So as limit x tends to 0, g of x will be limit x tends to 0 f of x minus k, which will be limit x tends to 0 f of x is k, so limit x tends to 0 g of x is 0. Can you repeat the last part? Why does limit of x tending to 0 f of x exist? Like we don't have f is continuous. In 0 plus. Yes. Yeah, yeah 0 plus. 0 plus. Still, like you can just fine. pull up by x. Like you can just pull up another one by x, something like that. X by x is a right? function that has no limit in it. So. What if the function is just a bunch of points? Okay, obviously this is not worth it. F can be in piecewise defined function as well. Exactly. And what is not regress about my solution? I'm just thinking exactly the, this does work. Okay, I think you thought like what we did here was like you just tried to took, this compare is, the lower yes, bounds. That's not what we do. That's not what we did. We had an assumption that A is the largest constant that works. But if f of x is greater than this thing for like if this does work, then okay, this works for all x and if 2a square plus 1 by 3 is like greater or equal a not greater or equal just strictly greater than a then this constant is obviously not the last one this is the last one does that make sense yeah why does the largest a exist 
Oh yeah, we did not prove that. You just need to do some hidden trial or just find that f of x greater than no, like, some. You defined a as like the largest a such that f of x is at least a x. Uh, okay, then we can take a tending to zero and somehow see that uh, no, after some point. Don't do that. Oh, but it does just like cause this point to have a lot. Just do this. Wait, how can you do to the other side? Just put X as expected. Yeah, yeah okay. A is 1 by 3 works, but why does largest A exist? But like oh. by the question, you just try to assume that largest, such largest A just exists. Yeah, we need to put like some upper bound Q. And like we are just comparing the lower bounds, right? Comparing lower bounds won't work in any impulse. We're not comparing lower bounds. Yes, so I mean, uh, I'll just continue with it because I think I get the point that um, the final f of uh, limit x and zero f of x may not exist, but just assume it does. Uh, um, the proof continues that limit um, f of x by x by the standard theorem has to be greater than limit uh, g of g of x, uh, sorry, f of f of x by uh, x plus one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, f of x by x, its limit as x tends to zero. Will basically be the con um some a same. So f of three, uh, sorry, limit x is zero. F of three x by x will be three a. Okay. Okay, and the limit x tends to zero. F of f of x. By x will be two uh, k square. What? What? Two a square. Two a square. So. And limit and x tends to zero. F of x by x will be um, one. Um, just one thing, it's right, the second one is but how can you f of f of 2x, f of f of 2x by x is 2 x Sorry to interrupt, but how can you choose such a, like you can take a to be an infinitely small number. Um, yeah, but that's the thing, that's the thing. Else. Um, we still get the condition, by the sandwich theorem, uh, the equality no, still I'm not to talking. So I'm still not get... like... 3a greater than or I'm equal not to 2a square plus 1. But I'm asking to that uh, we can take any a, like an a really. Oh. Yeah, you still. It was the largest. It was the largest. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Just another doubt. Yeah, but here we still get the condition. Two a is greater than equal to 2a square. Because essentially limit x tends to zero f of x by x should f of three x by x should be greater than or equal to limit x tends to zero f of f of two x by x plus f of plus limit x tends to zero. Um, the third one again is f of is limit x tends to zero x by x, not f of x by x. Limit x tends to zero f of x by x. Basically, the three terms I'm just dividing all three by x. Since x is not zero. And then, but the inequality still holds. 3a greater than or equal to 2a square plus 1. As these are the limits as x tends. As x becomes infinitely small. Yeah, um, x becomes infinitely small. Basically, it's a match. Do you see why you cannot just take limit x tend yeah. easily? Like we are just restricting it to be valid for some numbers, not for all. Because like limit can exist like any in a, even an in periodic function. Like if it is periodic, then it doesn't really make sense. So like just take sine x by x doesn't work, right? Uh, 
Uh, also, one more point. I think I can prove that this is largest A exists because uh, as Gunjan proved that Fx is greater than or equal to X by three and it's such a largest A number, three, right? Because oh, we have we need an upper so, bound because uh, what uh, if like A is like infinitely larger? Well, for that we can just we have an example that I mean, x by two yeah. works. Yeah, actually, I think this proves that has uh, largest. Angle. Yeah, like the example of x by two. You put a lot of things bit. tending to one value, so a largest value of a in the uh, yeah, but like uh, if the largest value of a was bigger oh, for this proof, I guess. But okay, fine. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what follow. Uh, like it ha whatever the largest value is, it has to be less than a half because we have the example of x by two. X by two is in capital F. And and this f x is equal to x by three. At least one exists. I mean, I think so. But I can you just tell it doesn't that x by two is like, the smallest element of the f? Also, uh, functions that uh, like if we have that x by two, yes, in it, it works. Therefore, if yes. a is bigger than one half, then we have a contradiction. I mean, if so, then a must be less than half for any. I yes, mean, yes. If we just prove that a self largest, then we are done, right? I mean, a will be one. But... No, no, like you, you are just proved that largest a exists. I mean, after not like this, try to consider the value. Uh, uh, after everything, if we have proved that such largest exists, then after all these things, uh, we will get that a is one by two. I mean, sure I have done two. A will be uh, greater than two a square. Let's say we already have a value half. Okay. So we just such an a exists. So such, if such a exists, then there is no uh, like. The minimal element of f is greater than half x, right? Yeah, yeah. So in some ways, you you need to prove that this minimal element is x half. So, like when if you prove that it's the largest, you need to prove that x by two is the minimal. No, no function can go smaller than that. So like just consider some k that is greater than two. So we have that f of x by k is greater than or equal to x for all x lying in real numbers, three of four positive real x. Okay. Where is Gunja? Okay, so I broke my Okay, okay. It's Did you actually like break it or that's a problem with it? Break it. You can use There's the a mouse, big scratch right? on the cap then. Oh, it's just see. not working around that area. You can just use the mouse. I, have I try writing. I try using the mouse. I know it will be ready for it. But then sometime you will just have another one. Why would I use a mouse? Oh, what, what can you do now? Like, if the uh, tablet has broke, you need to do this. I have another one. So you can get that. Yes, okay, this works. Okay. Okay, this sounds really bad. Thank you. Since you really have a practice of the pen, you can just write it now. It's not that bad. We have one more crap this time. Yep. Yeah. Well, what happened by well, that? Like then, uh, yes, yes, you are. 
Like the claim was the minimal element of the set of function f is half x. You see that if uh, it wasn't is it was greater than half x, then half x won't certainly work, but it works. So now we have that a is smaller than half. So if a is smaller than half, then a is greater. One in some ways, one by is greater than two. So it is in some ways like. What X. are we trying to do here? Sorry. I'm just trying to pull up a contradiction. Wait, if a is less than half, then isn't two a square plus one by three is greater than? Yes, yes, doesn't work out. Right? Uh, but uh, in some way, you are just trying to compare the lower bound of that function. That was the lower bound of that. It can be really greater than that. So it doesn't work, right? Like you can just put up an explicit function like x to the 4 by 5. What did you do to prove it? It doesn't work. F of x equals n. Okay, so basically. Okay, there is just a few things we have to do. One, prove. A excess. Then space. Second was finding a lower bound. Third, lower bound. Fourth, verify it. So we're done with this. What's our work? It's a greater equal half. We proved it. A isn't a greater equal half. A equals half works. What we didn't do is we did not prove that A exists. Like what's the point in proving A exists? We can just like pull up a okay, contradiction so here. If f of A x is like define something like uh, okay, I will try to explain it basically. If f of x is something like x cubed minus x squared is 4, then finding a directly can be ugly. If there's no explicit a that works for all that. Yes, yes, you can just take the values between 0 and 1. It just gets messed in the interval. Zero and one. Exactly. People want to think about it. Just see that this club, this table exists like just take a is equal to zero. A is equal to zero works for all of them since f is a function on positive reals. So such larger say should exist. Sorry, like uh, we assume that such a does, doesn't exist. Such mm -hmm. largest a doesn't exist. Okay, let's. Yeah. Yes. Assume. Now just know that we can't take a, any value greater than half of a. Why? So we have to, because like uh, x way to work, right? Then. Uh, it won't just work. Yes. So uh, we have that a is smaller than half. If a is smaller than half, just take a is equal to zero. And since f is on positive real. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. A is so smaller such... than half, and we have a bound one by three. Yes, anyway. bound. This but just it... works. Yeah, I was saying this, yes. So such a exists. Now we need to prove that this a is half. And we did prove that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. No, no, no. We didn't prove it. What? Like uh, we just. Oh yes. Well, yes, we are done. Okay, I guess some people did have doubts with this. I'm, I'm...
this part? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had a doubt. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we had that quadratic inequality, right? Three a greater than or equal to two s square plus one. And after solving that, uh, we get that l lies between one and a half, right? Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to find the largest a, right? So why didn't we take one? Okay, so basically, okay, let me just clarify the question. Where is the question? Okay, anyways. So there's, let's say there are three functions at work. Small, okay, let the functions be F1, F2, and F3. Small A1 is the capital A of F1, small A2 of F2, and small A of F3. So we get that F1x greater equal A1x, F2x greater equal A2x. F3x greater equal A3x. We need to find the largest a such that fx, like f can be any of these three functions, is greater or equal a3, a, a of x, not a of x, ax. So do you see why a will actually just be the minimum of a1, a2, a3? Exactly, least of a bond. Right. It, it was an easy problem, I guess. Maximum blow a bond. There's but some bonds of. Uh, the statement can be tricky, really. Yeah, the it statement is tricky. Yes. Any questions? Like, really, just ask statement. Like, Functions are written if like uh, f of x is f of y is just f of x plus y, or x and y belong to x. You can try to try proofing. Okay, finding what the function is.
Oh, I have an idea. Uh, I'm saying that First of all, we got that f of zero is equal to zero. Uh, then uh, my my claim is uh, f x is equal to uh, f of one uh, x uh, f of one time x because f of zero is zero. So no other question. And so uh, what I'm doing is uh, uh, I am substituting uh, uh, x is equal to uh, at the place of x, I'm I'm writing p x by q where p and q are just uh, uh, integers. I mean, not natural. What is what is the norm? Okay, p. You're writing p by q. X. Uh, p by q this times. Uh, no, actually p uh, p x by q. P x yeah. by q. Uh, plus x. Uh, at the place of I mean y we can take. Uh, x by q, sorry, x by q. You can use it right Okay. Can I see? Yeah, is equal to yeah. Okay. Uh, so so basically, we can uh, what we can do is uh, we can just uh, add this p from zero to q minus one. Basically, uh, just add this p. Uh, uh, we can just take the summation both the sides, and we can just add this. Uh, we can just vary p from zero to q minus one. P uh, no, Q minus one, and then this will give that uh, f of x uh, is equal to Q times x by Q. Basic, very very close to this. Okay, first you as P is positive. Well, just know that f of x by Q can take any value. For different things, like for different cues. Okay. That's just what you do. And then you add up of x with x by q. Like in other ways, you can just expand f of x by q also. Uh, like we need to vary the denominator, the rest will be done. Like you can just actually, keep in actually I'm getting yes. uh, actually I'm getting fx is equal to q times f of x by q. Yeah, that is true. Can you tell? Yeah. This does not seem very clear. Uh, what? Okay. How about this? What does f of x this I can see? Uh. 
basically the Yeah. What is a one plus a two till a n? Yes, sir. F of a one plus f of a two plus till f of a n. Exactly. So what is f of p x by q? Three times f of x by q. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's p times f of q by x by q. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is this something you were trying to do? Uh, no, I, okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I was taking this uh, like, uh, for in my sense, uh, the, that p was variable. I mean, I haven't fixed the p. I, I just think was that p is greater than, uh, I mean, greater than equal to, uh, no, greater than zero. Where I basically can say I guess this, I have a which bit, I guess I have written it as proof greater. So just note that default zero is zero. Yes. Now we have some, any, any rational number k. So we have f of k is equal to k by n times f of n for any n. Now just note that we can just keep increasing this n and like get. You just get kind of an arithmetic progression, like it will then become f of k by n plus f of k by n until it will be n times f of k by n. I just miss those things. So it's technically n into f of k by n. F of n into k by n. Yes, which is n f of yes. K by n. yes. Now just note that we can get another form for f of k by n. And we just keep moving and see that as we increase n. What is n here? Yeah, n is a standard theory. Right? N is any number. N is any natural number. So how are you moving forward with k by n? You're choosing another random yes, number? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we can use any another random number. And then we can just keep using another random number and just note that in the end that number would become infinitely small. Wait, this becomes it, infinite. Yes, it, yes, yes. This becomes infinitely big. Yes. In an absurd so way, this is technically like f of k equals k times f times f of small. But it doesn't just make sense, right? F then exactly. would reach zero, and it doesn't make sense at all. Okay, what if we just put to a silly thing, put AI A1 equal A2 equal A3, or AI equals. Wait, we can just use periodic numbers here. You don't need anything, just like, add some. Like, uh, I'm saying like this denote any rational number by like we took an n base system for any rational number so we got the partition of that rational number in terms of natural numbers and we know that this works on natural numbers and if it works on natural numbers then it works for rational numbers you didn't it is it is in kind of, yes it is kind of a cheating but i guess it is correct first let's be rational okay. Yes. What do you get? In natural, you just take the smallest y possible. That is one. So f of x plus one is equal to f of x plus one, which just becomes f of one, which just becomes x times f of one. 
few meters. Yes, yes. And we just keep decreasing x and we get that f of x is equal to x times f of 1. So we know it works for, uh, this is the solution for the natural numbers. About negative integer. Yes. Now, by we addict, we can do this, but it is kind of cheating. Just yeah, like take, yes. So just uh, we should just leave this for now because it does uh, because many people uh, don't know about this. Exactly, that's why I don't know. Yes, yes. So now take any rational number x. We have that it has an integer part. It has an rational part, fraction part. Now we you know since this yes, or yes. f of n plus f, where n is yes, n is a natural, uh, n is a, an integer, and f is any random x equals n f one plus f of f. This seems illegal. Let's say it cheap. It is, but let's just do it. Now we just know, I need to prove that for all numbers between 0 and 1. It just is this. Yeah, but can you check for all like fractions between 0? No, oh, I have no overthink. Can you speak about um, using this for the first time? It's not really. Uh, I guess I have a solution. Uh, like uh, we get f of 0 equals 0 and let f of 1 equals k. So we get f of 2 equals 2k and f of 3 equals 3k and in general f of nk equals nk. You mean f of n equals Oh, yeah, yeah. f of n equals nk. Uh, so, we generalize it for p by q. For the natural numbers. Yes. f of p by q uh, equals? And we assume that p is less than q. Yes, less than uh, so we add like f of p by q plus f of p by q plus f of q q times. So this is equal to f of p. This equals f of p by q times. Which is equal to kp. F so f of p by, p by q is k times p, p by q. q. Yeah, this is again for p and q. p times q equal to zero. Okay, just belong. And for p greater than q, like we can take the fractional part and the integer part. Why solve them separately? Then did 
you use the fact that this doesn't give any value? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you properly. Um, did you use the fact that P is less than Q anywhere here? Uh, like uh, adding P by Q. You can add 10 by 7, 7 times. No one can stop. Right? Oh. You don't need to break it as F of 1 plus F of P by 7. Right? Uh, yes, yes. So it's technically true for all fractions that are positive. Um, I would just know that we can make it vary for rationals, like for any rational greater than zero and smaller than one. These are the foundations. So we can just make them vary. So it doesn't follow. Right? Wait, I'm sorry. I think that you like uh, you proved that f of p is equal to q times f of p by so q. So what right? we did here is f of p equals f of p by q times q. Okay, also assumption p and q belong to natural. Yes, yes, yes. So this is just writing f of p by, p by q plus p by q plus p yes, by yes. q. This is true that uh, f of p is equal to q times f of p by q, right? This is f of p by q times q. Yes. Uh, just know that since q is a rational number, and if we try to partition it, partition any number. f of j, yes. Uh, if we try to partition any j, it doesn't work into number of f of p by q. Because then q tends to become a fraction number. And it won't work. Like you are just Wait, trying to partition it into fraction fractional number of parts. Like okay. uh, you took F. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's say 100 by 49. Okay. You can very well partition this as 1 by 49 plus 1 by 49 plus 1 by 49. 100 times that's just 100. That's okay. That's not. That's. F of 1 by 49 plus F of 1 by 49, 100 times, and that's 100 F of 1 by 49. And now just take F of 50 by 89. 50 by 89. Yes. Sure. It becomes 50 times F of 1 by 89. Yes. yes. Now just note that we can vary F of 1 by 89 and vary f of 1 by 49. We didn't have that f of 1 by 89 is also 1 by 89 times some f of k. You're just trying to smaller the k. Okay, so what we did yeah, How would you vary it? Like, how will you vary f of 1 by 89? That's what I'm... Okay, really so, lacking words to explain. Okay, so here f of p, p is an integer, natural, f of let's say 16, that's f of 1 by 9, plus 1 by 9, plus 1 by 9. How many times? Um, 16 times 9, 144 times, right? Is this true? Yes. Yeah. This is 144 times F of 1 by 9. Right. Instead of like 16 and 9, just the F of P equals F of 1 by Q plus 1 by Q plus 1 by Q. P Q times. This is speaking. So I go one by Q, 
Which is, which is okay. Wait, I'm just sending a link in chat. Yeah. It would explain really better. It is a Wikipedia link that like they proved it for first on natural numbers and then they went to rationals between zero and one because it is essential. Just read that because I'm not really able to explain. So do this stuff you need to first do with multiplicate activity, right? Like to take that n out m q by p by q out. Like you can take out the p, but you can't take out yeah. the q, right? To I take just out showed the q. Like how will you take out the q? I'm asking. You're not that. just taking it out. You're gonna show that. Yes. F of p equals one by q one by q how many times p yes, two yes. times i'm saying like you can take out the p but how will you take out the de uh, denominator the main question is that we are yeah, uh, so, like adding a pq times right exactly. uh, we are but like uh, it is in fractional number of parts right it becomes in fractional number of parts and cauchy's function okay, was defined directly to this we're not moving here directly we'll Going from f of p by q to p f of one by q, and yes. we're not going to define f of one by q as f of q equals q. Okay, f of one equals q f one by q. Yes, you need and to prove that, go, right? Then only we yes. can just prove that it is a linear equation. Yeah, I think we did show that f of p equals p k for naturals. Like you have shown it for p, natural numbers p, right? Just replace p by q, right? But it was on natural numbers, right? You proved it for yeah. natural. You have taken q as a natural, right? Like you are yeah. trying to p take out p by q. Yeah. Then. Okay, p by q is a rational number. If it was natural, you can just take it out. But it is a rational here. How will you fraction? No, a rational number can be written in the form of p by q. Yeah. Or oh, p, q. Or p, p and q are natural. Oh, you are not getting my point. Like, just take f of p by q. You are mm -hmm. saying that it is equal to p by q times f of one. We're not directly saying that. Okay, let's follow steps. Okay. Like, let's slow down for a minute and let's follow steps. f of p by q equals f of one by q plus one by q p times. So it's p times f of one by q. Yes, yes. Now do tell me if you disagree somewhere. It is right. F I agree to yeah. this, but I'm F like of asking, one equals how will, F yes. of one by Q plus one by Q, Q times, right? Yes, yes, yes. So it's Q F of by Q. Oh, yes. So this is I didn't know P it. F of Then we can just take it out, yes. Exactly. Yes, makes sense. So F of P by Q is P by Q F one. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. This is why, like, since P and Q belong to naturals, so I'm technically just proven F of X equals X F one for all X belonging to rationals possible. And F is a odd, so we get it for all exactly. rational. So F of X equals F of one for all
Does that make sense? Yeah. Any doubts? Let's do this Any ideas? We can try uh, swapping A and B. If you put A is zero, you do get F of F, F of F of B is equal to two F of B plus K. Yeah. Well, if you just prove F is surjective, you should get F of X is 2X plus. F is surjective, we can just prove it. Yeah. If you just prove that, you will get F of X is 2X plus. Wait, K. then, then did, uh, isn't the sign wrong here? It should be F of 2A minus 2F of B. Wait, no. no, 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 it is wrong.
Oh, then we have that f of 2m minus 2 times f of a is a constant. Then we have that f is linear. Sorry? Then we have that f of 2m minus 2 times f of a is a constant. Right. So for a of the form, some power of 2, then it is a linear function. But it is then over k. Two times two raised to x means something. Not really an immense. You then just get some kind of linear. If you prove f of zero is equal to zero, it might not be zero. Yes. If we write two f of b is f of two b plus f of zero. Two f of b is f of two b plus f of zero. Yeah. And then the right hand side, we simplify with what we found f of f of a plus b equals 2 f of a plus b plus f of 0. Two f of a. 2 f of a plus b. 2 f of a plus b. Oh, okay. That's f of 0. Yeah, of course. Do yeah, so we get that f of 2a plus f of 2b is equal to 2f of a plus b. Wait, how can you just do that? We have to let f of 0 is 0. No, they cancelled on both sides. f of 0 cancelled on both sides. Yeah, that's good. Okay, then we Oh, okay, makes sense. So f of two a plus two f b equals two f of a plus b plus f zero, and then f of two a is this. So two f of a plus two f of b minus f zero equals two f of a plus b plus f zero. So we get f of a plus b. Plus f zero equals f of a plus f of b. It is just cos c in some way. You can substitute g by x is equal to f of x minus k f f f of zero by two. Then you just get that g is and additive function. If g is an additive function, then f is a linear function. So we are done. Yes, it cancels on the both sides. G of a plus b is equal to g of a plus g of b. So g is an yeah. linear function. Yes, yeah, so we can just substitute g of x yes. as 
and then we can just find the value of that f of zero by just substituting the values. N x mm -hmm. y k, N x plus k. Yes, x c plus. Now you can just get the values of c and k by substituting. Let's see. Let's substitute it here. So this is two a times c plus k plus two times b plus b c k equals a plus b times c plus k times c plus k. So two A C plus two B C plus two K equals eight C square plus B C square plus B C. Okay, now just substitute zeros and okay, let's substitute A and B both zeros. So you get two K equals C C. So k equals zero, c plus two. And if k equals zero, then the function is just f of x equals zero. And that I think does work. Okay, no. Yeah, you just put okay. Yeah, it does not work. C is equal to two. C plus zero or two. Ah, uh, zero by two. It is two. There are a bunch of cases here. Let's yes. not substitute in the original equation. That's, that's a bad idea yeah that's but we can good. but we can just get it yeah we can solve cases but nobody wants to solve cases. okay just leave it for the reader yeah also here we assumed that the function is non-constant and then we got g is xc. If it's constant, then we need to solve the case. Like, cosine it's constant, constant, it's fine. You subtracted f of 0. Yeah. Uh, c equals g of 1, right? Yeah. OK. I think we're running out of time. That's not very So we are leaving here. Yeah, I think we're running out of time. Any okay. doubts? Then I hope you can buy it back from here. Are you planning to take an every session or was this the end of this question? I still had a few things to cover. Because like Sutan will like you didn't cover cot G in real numbers. Uh, oh, but Sutan, uh, there is a, another session on non-standard appease. Yeah, but this is very standard. I still have a few things. Yes, standard. it is a kind of cookie where only X is the solution. Yeah, kind of. If there are slots, I'll probably try to take another session. Yeah. These beam contests, this kind of appears only show up. Like those monster appears don't show up. Like those monster appears show up really less number of time, but when they show up, they are really great. Yeah. Any doubts? I 
Uh, can you share the link of the whiteboard later on? You can just make it into convert it into PDF, yeah, PDF and, and upload it on Google Drive. How? Just check on Google Drive. Right? Wait, let me check. I'll check it first. Also, I was planning to just share the handphone. That basically has everything that I did today and yesterday. See this link. This is the procedure. You are using one note. Yes, you are. Okay, it will work. Okay, I will look at it and I'll probably show you. So. Yes, like if you have some problem in doing it, just ask. Worst case, I'll send screenshots. I'll compile that into a PDF. Yes, yes, yes. You can just crop and make it into PDF. I can search job recording and sharing. 